that provides opportunity for more access to more jobs. And this is the time when we need that. So this, this program is ill-advised, ill-conceived, based on science which is rapidly being disproven and publicly excoriated by people who know other scientists. And you bring this to us and say you have to do it. Well, this isn't anything new that we're bringing to you. This has been in the works for a long time. But it's also interesting, several of my, there, I have a handful of employers who participate voluntarily because they see the value added. And I also have a few employers who are no longer affected by the law because they've had downsizing, but they have requested to still be a part of the program because their employees really like it. And because they see it as a way to attract employees, they see it as a way um, to, to, they offer this as a benefit to their employees with little or no cost behind it. And so I agree with you, the car's a great invention. And we're not telling people they need to get out of their cars if they can't. Not everybody, I can't, I do other things. But what we're telling them is we have some options available to you if you wanna take advantage of it. And so that's the purpose of the program. And so the state way back when saw a need to legislate it to help promote that more but no one's in disagreement with you that the car is a bad th is a good thing. It's just there are, I have talked to many many people who don't have reliable transportation and they are desperately trying to find a way to get to work so to maintain that job that they need to have. And because we have pro a program like this available to them and we have a structure in place that helps them, they're able to find rides and things and keep that job that they need. And we're making it much easier for people that really need that assistance and people that choose to have that assistance because not everybody has to have it. Some people choose it. I just real quick, uh, so the, the next steps in this process would be to ad adopt the interlocal and then the ordinance. Is that two separate items? Or? The ordinance and the interlocal. Yeah. Okay. So the, okay. So any uh, changes that we or amendments we'd want to make to the ordinance. Um, doesn't affect our involvement in the interlocal at all. That's just how we're doing things here. We just need you to agree to a new ordinance. That's We do need that so that you're in compliance with the law. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of the interlocal, they're separate. Well, thanks all three of you for coming out because I, you know, we've all, a lot of us have been subjected to this all along and, and it answers those questions. So appreciate you guys coming out and spending your time out here. Um, where is this thing at on the budget for the state that will would this ever go away? Is this something on the budget that says, you know, we've got more important things than this, so now we'll cut this? Is that a, on the horizon? Yeah, I, one of the things I do in addition to just Jan works for me at the city, she runs the program and I say she's really the CTR employee, but happens to work under the city because we have the most number of employers, so it makes sense for us to run. That could change if people think we're not doing a good job. Uh, I also serve on the CTR board, which is an advisory board to the government to sort of help strategize and figure out what the policy is. I can tell you that the funding has to be reauthorized every two years. So there is, you know, no, it's not set permanently. That funding level does potentially change. There are pieces of it that are, you know, special grant programs that existed in the previous <coughs> budget that don't exist now. So, um, you know, is it possible that, you know, in the next biennium, the funding could change? Yes. If that changed here, I think we would, what would it change? It would change the, the funding coming from the state, meaning, you know, it would, it would, would it be an unfunded mandate? I mean, I don't know, maybe if the funding went away. Would we as a local jurisdictions, Vancouver, Canada, Shula, the same, still need to try to implement the state law? I think so, unless there would be a major revision state law so you know at the at the state level for the advisory board that I sit on you know we obviously like not I, we like it being a, a funded mandate something that the state the legislature has decided hey we have this law in effect we believing they believe you know by policy that reducing congestion on our major roadways is a, is a public goal and that's why they set the law and so they're backing it up with some money to help the local jurisdictions do it I very much appreciate your, your taking the time to come down here. I can see your enthusiasm for the program. But what, what I see from this is the need for some new people in Olympia. 
I would just agree. I really want to thank you personally. I do believe in all the data that's been given to us, and I read a lot of the data. It, and I think probably the, I mean, this is a program that's been in, in the works for almost 20 years, since 1991, and obviously it's not considered to be onerous to most employers. So I personally don't see any problem with Well, part of the continuing. conversation came out that was, was this a last put in mandate? And, and have answered that. Right. In fact, it is a funded mandate. So. Any other questions? I'll scan this and get it to everybody. Okay. Wonderful. Everybody will have that. Wonderful. Good. Keith, thank you for taking the time to still be on the phone with us. Sure, thank you. Thanks, Keith. You bet. Thanks, Keith. Scott, Jan, thank you very much for coming out here and scanning. You see more of Wash than you I want? Just, no, I just I, looked down the road. So. Oh, do you really? <laughs> Not Quick technical question, yeah. Mitch. If if that's available <laughs> online, if that report's available online, a link works for me better right. than. It is. And now you guys even have some sewer treatment <coughs> uh, knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> we work in public works. So we're sorry. <laughs> Not at that level. Thank you. Well, yes. thank you again. If we can be of other help, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Appreciate the trips you make out here. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, Trevor, stormwater utility. Stormwater utility. Did we break the connection with you? Is he off? Yeah, he's off. Okay. Well, he's stormwater expert too. Oh, okay. we'll keep him. Huh? Those state guys. So we've had a few inquiries about the stormwater utility. Its first year. Uh, what it's accomplishing. What type of incentives we have offered as far as discount for NPDES phase two uh, holders or industrial permit holders? Um, the front cover page just really goes through um, setting up the utilities, so some of this will be redundant for the individuals that have been involved in that process. Um, also, steps through 2010, including capital projects. Um, for 2010, uh, it's budgeted at about $800,000. Uh, which doesn't take into consideration the capital projects. Um, and then also uh, looks beyond 2010 for capital expenditures, um, $1.2 million from 2011 to 2018. A large piece of that is the Colbert work for Campen Creek by the golf course off 39th Street. Uh, as you move through, a few of the uh, charts are actually right out of our stormwater plan. Uh, program activities and staffing. Currently, we're staffed at 2.5. We've got two full-time stormwater employees, Travis Giesler and Scott Randall. And then we've got Little Noonan uh, at a half in between street and storm. So we're 1 to 1.5 understaffed currently. Um, with the equipment, most of you are fairly familiar with the Vactor truck. That is coming in a little bit over budget this year at $325,000. Very expensive piece of equipment. Uh, we have been successful in a pass-through grant, two and a fifty thousand dollars, to be able to purchase that. What is that? I'm sorry. Uh, right below capital on the second page. Like, what is a pass-through grant? Explain it. Pass-through grant is NPDES Phase Two that's been handed down by Ecology. There's specific. Um, eligibility requirements to be able to get the pass-through grant, whether it's infrastructure to complete capital projects if you have major deficiencies, 